Let's look at this. The Council of Nicaea. Three things I want to cover here today about that council. The cause of the council. Why was there a need to convene this council in the first place? Let's understand that. What was the decree that came out of the Council of Nicaea? And what was the outcome of the council itself? All right, let's, let's look closely at this. What caused the council meeting at Nicaea? Well, to understand that, we have to go back to the first European pharaoh in history. His name was Ptolemy the First Soter. I told you I was going to present some archaeological evidence. This is what this is this is what you mean. This is what I mean when I say evidence that demands a verdict. This is not somebody that we just made up. Here's a coin that dates back to this man's administration. The first European pharaoh. He was the beginning of what is called the Ptolemaic dynasties of ancient Egypt. I take that back. There's no such thing as an ancient white person. Did y'all hear what I said? They ain't been around long enough to refer to them as ancient. Okay, so if they are doing anything, it's recent. It's Johnny come late. Here you have this man, Ptolemy I, also known as Soter. Now, write down the word Soter, S-O-T-E-R. Write that down. You can see the years of his life, 367 to 283 BCE, approximately in there. Whenever you see C-A before dates, that means circa, means approximate. You write, did you write down S-O-T-E-R? Now, after that, write in parentheses, I mean like, just make parentheses, but you're going to continue the word. I-O-L-O-G-Y. What is it spell? Soteriology. Exactly. Who knows what soteriology is? The doctrine or the study of salvation. Right. You know why? Because the word soter means savior. You need to understand the historicity here. This man, when he became Pharaoh in Egypt, he wanted the Egyptians to, to consecrate him as a god. Why? Not capital G-O-D, small G-O-D. Why was that? Because all of the pharaohs of Egypt, of Egypt were called gods. With a small G. That's why they said Asa Ra. A son of God. Every pharaoh was considered a god. Now, this European pharaoh comes in and he wants them to make him a god. But the Egyptians did not do that. The Egyptians said, no, you don't belong here in the first place. The only reason why you're on the throne is because you took, it was taken by military force under Alexander the Greek. Not Alexander the Great. Alexander the Greek. Wasn't nothing great about him. Y'all following what I'm saying? Ptolemy the first, Soter, was a good friend of Alexander. And that's how he ended up becoming the first fa European pharaoh of Kemet. Check out his boldness. He took upon himself, or himself, the name Meriamun. Satepenra. Mm. Mm. Sound familiar? Ursa Ma'at Ra. Satepen Ra. Rametsu Mary Amen. Mary means beloved or loved. Amen is God. So Mary Amen means beloved or loved of God. 
So Tevin Ra means chosen by God. This, he wasn't given this name. He took it upon himself. Well, he insisted that they make an image in his honor. Oh, shucks now. The Egyptians didn't want to do that, so he stopped putting them to death. So he found a group of sellout Egyptians, Melkite, Coptic Egyptians, and the city of Menephah, which is known today as Memphis. The priests at Memphis, which was also the capital back then, the priests at Memphis said, we'll consecrate you to the priesthood. Why did they sell out? Right, you saved their behind. Exactly. Guess what? It still goes on today. So they sold out and they consecrated him to uh, the office of Pharaoh and they made an image. They made an image in honor of him and this image is called Serapis. Y'all follow me? Y'all sure? So you got to understand this. You can't share this with nobody else if you don't understand. The worship of Serapis. You see, this dude, Ptolemy the first, that is, that's Serapis. The Egyptian version of Serapis, dating back to approximately 350 BCE. This is the image that they made in honor of Ptolemy the first Soter. Okay? What is Os Os Serapis? They took the name Osiris and combined it with the word Apis, which means the bull. Right, right. Osiris. It became Serapis. Now here's the deep thing about it. Ptolemy the first tried to incorporate the religions, the religion of the Greeks into Egypt by creating the worship of a new god. And this was that god in honor of him called Serapis. Now, it was really a composite deity as you see here. Again, as I said, made up, it looked kind of dumb, don't it? But hey, you know. The Egyptians had to give him something to appease him. Okay? And as you see here, over here is the Greco-Roman version of Serapis, the painting. How do you know that Serapis? By the cup on top of his head. Right. Y'all see it? Now, what year are we talking here? Greco-Roman, 135 BCE. So this can't be Jesus. If he had existed, it can't be Jesus. You follow what I'm saying? This is the image that the Greeks made the Africans worship. Yeah, buddy. Hmm. In fact, to show you how deep this goes, there was a correspondence from Emperor Hadrian referring to the Alexandrian worshipers. Where's Alexandria? Come on, talk to me. Where's Alexandria? In Egypt, Africa, right? Yes. The Alexandrian worshipers of Serapis calling themselves what? The bishops of Christ. Now that's deep. There was no Jesus. There was no Jesus. But yet these people refer to themselves as the bishops of Christ. And here's what he says, Egypt, which you commended to me, my dearest Sir Servianus, I have found to be wholly fickle and inconsistent. Putting down Egypt, okay, I can deal with that. And continually wafted about by every breath of fame, the worshippers of Serapis here are called what? Wait a minute. The worshippers of Serapis are called Christians. 
And those who are devoted to the God, Serapis, I find, call themselves the bishops of Christ. Don't take my word for it, family. Go verify it. Just type this in right here on the internet. This whole thing will come up. Now, what does that mean? That means, brothers and sisters, that in Africa, this image of Serapis that goes all the way back to 350 BCE had become the object of worship. Y'all follow me? This was by command. Arius. Everybody say a brother called Arius. A brother called Arius. He had a problem with it. And he made some noise about it. They say this, and I wonder how true it is. The only thing necessary for falsehood or evil to triumph is for good men or women to remain silent. Follow what I'm saying? Falsehood was on the loose. A black man named Arius from Libya came forth and said, enough is enough. He began to explain to her, and you all see what years he lived here, 256 to 336 AD. So guess what? We're talking about the time of the Council of Nicaea, 325 AD. Needless to say, you see, he died 11 years later. Okay? And I wonder did he die or was he killed? Arius, yeah, but. Arius lived at a time when the church was divided because of the Christological dispute which he was instrumental in starting. He taught that, and everybody write this down, Christus, C-H-R-I, I'm sorry, C-H-R-I-S-T-U-S, Christus. Christus was also the nickname for Serapis. What word do you see there? Christ. Christ, exactly. Not a Jesus, Serapis. And guess what, y'all? This was deep. This marble image right here, this is the newfangled version of Serapis. Okay, and they've used, they've used this bearded figure. This is now the image that they use for Jesus today. Okay, because Serapis, you know, or I do, in a few minutes, show you the comparison. This marble bust of Serapis, which is in where? London. London Museum. Right now, as I'm talking to you, that's in the London Museum. Have, you were there, did you see it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is in the London Museum. Why haven't we been, why haven't we been taught this? Why y'all who grew up in the church all your life? Why weren't you taught this? Why were not taught it? You can't teach it. Because it will cause the Christian church to shut down. Arius was making noise, man. He was telling everybody, this deity that y'all are worshiping is not deity. He was made by people's hands. Go back here. He was, look at that. He was made, he was formed out of metal. How do you tell a people who have been worshiping Serapis for over two and a half centuries that what they've been worshiping ain't real? How do you do that? Arius was causing such a problem because people started listening to him. And they started doing their research and finding out the man was telling the truth. We're worshiping an image that was made in honor of Ptolemy the first. And the Son of God, which, which this is called the Son of God, same as with Jesus, the Europeans took the S-U-N, talk to me black people, and made it the S. In. Why do you think every picture you see of Jesus, the sun is behind his head? 
We weren't taught to, taught to call it. We, we were taught to call it a halo. I dare you to go down here to the Catholic Cathedral on Lindell, is it? All you got to do is walk in there and look, walk up to the altar and you see exactly what I'm talking about. They got this big pearly white Jesus on the cross with the sun behind his head. Meaning he is a sa Ra, a son of Ra. And Ra was called, or God was called Ra in ancient Egypt. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Arius came along and he began to mess up everybody's program. He started telling people, y'all are believing in a statue. And guess what y'all, some of y'all do too. Some of y'all got the statue, little tiny one hanging around your neck. Yes you do. And I mean, you know, I, I have to put it out again. Why do you keep celebrating that? Why do you keep celebrating death? You know? If you're going to celebrate something, celebrate life. Why is it that nobody yet... I should, I should patent this thing and make some money. Just, just so I can pay some bills. <laughs> I should patent this thing. I should actually patent and I'm giving somebody a secret to become a millionaire now. Okay, go out of here and patent and don't forget me when you do now, alright? Go out of here and patent an empty tomb. <laughs> Next Sunday, that's what everybody's supposed to be celebrating. The resurrection. Why ain't nobody wearing empty tombs around their necks? They're still wearing the cross with him on it. He's still dead. Y'all follow what I'm saying, people? Arius caused such a problem for the, for the clergy coalition of his day. He caused such a problem for the ministers' union of his day. He caused such a problem for the ecclesiastical dignitaries of his day that they they had, I mean, really, people were starting to leave their churches and going to listen to Arius. So what happened, for the sake of stability in the Roman Empire, Constantine called a council and summoned all the bishops of the Roman Catholic Church to this council meeting. It was called the Nicene Council. And in this council, the first order of business was to discredit and silence Arius. Yes, we got to stop this man. Yes, black man from Libya. We got to stop him. He's telling the truth. But we don't need for the people to know that. Y'all hearing me? So they convened a council meeting and they came up with a creed. Now mind you, when this council meeting was called, there was no Jesus. This is who existed. Serapis. Y'all following what I'm saying? Are you clear? Don't take my word for it. Invalidate what I'm saying. Prove me wrong. Go find a coin or a statue of Jesus somewhere. You won't find one, brothers and sisters. Nobody, origin, none of the historians of the first, second, third century said anything about somebody called Jesus. Listen, bro. Listen, Lord. Listen to what I'm saying. If there was somebody who really turned water into wine, they'd have statues of him everywhere. If somebody really took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed 5,000 people, they'd have statues and monuments of him everywhere. If somebody had really walked the water, that'd been it, man. <laughs> that, that's been it. 
Did y'all see what that brother did, man? They would, y'all follow what I'm saying? They would be drawings and everything of it. Not one iota of evidence anywhere on this planet. So what they had to do was they had to take this image right here, the Serapis image, and make it Jesus. At the Nicene Council, y'all all right? All right. You sure? All right. At the Nicene Council, the Nicene Council lasted for two months and 12 days. Two months and 12 days of deliberation as to what to do with Arius and also to pass a law that people can't kneel down and pray at this time. They got to stand up and pray and also to pass a law that this is going to be the day that everybody celebrates Easter. Okay? Now even though this pagan practice of Easter had existed for thousands of years, nobody had actually decided what day it was going to happen on. So the Nicaea Council. 318 bishops were present. Pope Sylvester, everybody say Pope Sylvester. Another sellout preacher. Pope Sylvester. Constantine went to Pope Sylvester and said, now listen, I'm making you the first Pope. Black man, right? I'm making you the first Pope, Sylvester. Okay? But now here's what I want done. And as long as you follow my, my orders, you'll be a rich pope. You ain't nothing to worry about. Pope Sylvester was Emperor Constantine's puppet and was used to proclaim his wishes. To this council we owe the creed of Nicaea defining against Arius. And that's some deep stuff. They actually convened a council meeting and came up with a creed just to discredit Arius. The Nicaea Creed. Which became the statement of the Christian faith was written and decreed and canonized by 318 Roman Catholic bishops of the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. Let's check it out. Let's read it together. What does it say? Can everybody see it? Let's read it. We believe in one God, the Father, all-powerful, maker of all things, both seen and unseen. Stop right there. Okay. Not a problem. Now, they begin to address the issue. You know, see how you notice how they had to open it up? They had to open it in a, in a statement that is unanimously agreed upon with everybody. Arius didn't have no problem with that statement. That, in fact, that was Arius' argument. They ain't but one God. He ain't got no son. That was Arius' argument. See what I'm saying? Okay? The son, the one y'all calling the son is the S U N. That was Arius' argument. But now they begin to address Arius' heresy, as they called it. Now, actually, the man was telling the truth. And by the way, y'all, Arius historically existed. He really existed, okay? He was telling the truth. But that's the problem. The establishment couldn't handle the truth and not remain in power. And, and remain in power. Now let's look at the next thing now they begin to address. And in what? One Lord. One Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten, begotten from the Father. Why did they have to say that? Because they wanted you to know. See, see, that, that statue that they made, that wasn't begotten from the Father. That was made by people. The Serapis image, that was made in a furnace. Shaped and molded by the hands of craftsmen. Right, right. Okay? So they had to come up with a creed to knock all that out. Begotten from the Father. That is from the substance of the Father. Y'all see this? I mean, all you got to do is read this about three or four times and you'll see how asinine it is. <laughs> 
just, just read it several times and you see, why do they have to keep saying that? Why do they have to say that again? I mean, what, what are they trying to say? You follow what I'm saying? Because from the Father, that is from the substance of the Father. Check this out. God from God. Light from light. True God from true God. Now you just said God from God. So why you have to turn around and say true God from true God? Begotten, not made. Y'all see it? That's already already said up here twice. Begotten, begotten from the Bible. Only begotten, begotten from the Bible. They got to say it again. Begotten, not made. They're specifically addressing the statements that was made by Arius. Now that's some deep stuff. They actually created a creed based on what Arius said that Catholics everywhere now have to recite every day. Consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things came to be, both those in heaven and those in earth, and for us humans and for our salvation. He came down and became incarnate, became human, suffered and rose up on the third day, went up into the heavens, and is coming to judge the living and the dead, and in the Holy Spirit. Now why did they have to say all this? <laughs> Think, people. If it really happened, you ain't got to go through all this. Now it gets real deep. Because now they, they in the, part two of this, they actually talk against Arius' words. And those who say, meaning Arius, there was once when he was not. See, that's what Arius said. Arius said, I remember the day when there was no Serapis image, when blacks were on the throne. Okay, Serapis didn't always exist. Serapis came into existence since you white folk got in here in Egypt. That's what he's saying. So the Roman Catholic Council said, and anybody who says that there was once when he was not, and before he was begotten, he was not, and that he came to be from things that were not, or from another hypostasis or substance, affirming that the Son of God is subject to change or alteration. These, the Catholic and Apostolic Church, what y'all, anathematizes. Look at the person next to you and say, there's that control mechanism again. They had to put this creed together because of what was happening with people's eyes coming open. Well, it's deep because there was a lot of confusion, a lot of discussion. People said, now that don't make no sense, but what Arius is saying does kind of make sense. So, since they were going through all this, Emperor Constantine stepped into the room. And he said, all right, I'm ordering y'all to decree that the Serapis image is Jesus Christ. And that Jesus Christ is everything that was just said. And then he ordered all books to be burned. Why? You got to get rid of the evidence. See y'all, that's why I encourage y'all, go to Kemet while you can. Go to Kemet while you can. Get the evidence while you can. Because in any argument of apologetics, that means proving your point, the rule is no evidence, no argument. Huh? Sure did. That's what the God in Egypt said to us. Sure said it, brother. I forgot all about that. No evidence, no argument. And that's why they are whitewashing Kemet now. I should say Arab washing Kemet now. They're slowly but surely removing all of the black presence out of Egypt and replacing it with an Arab presence so that they can tell the world that they did all of this. When Constantine came in and made his ruling, 
All of the brothers who were behind Arius, Dad, all of the brothers who stood with Arius, punked out. Punk out, man. We don't we, we, we don't we don't want no trouble. <laughs> Harris, I know you tell the truth, but man, shoot, we got to eat, man. You know, I got to pay for that Lexus, man. You know? That chariot of gold that I'm riding out there, brother. And them horses, they're pulling that thing, man. It costs money. So, Harris, I'm sorry, brother. You know, you my man. You know, we here. But I, I, got to, I got to sidestep you on this one. Nobody stands up against the Emperor Constantine. And all the brothers who came to him to, to, to Nicaea with him forsook him. That's why y'all, you know, history tells me. You know, you got folk, I appreciate, I love it, I love it when y'all say, I'm with you. Y'all know how much I done heard that? And folks who said it ain't here. I mean, I love to hear it, don't get me wrong. But I ain't resting on that. It's not your strength I'm standing on, man. I'm standing on the fact that God gave me this assignment. That's who my strength is. You follow what I'm saying? To awaken our people. I don't, I don't want to have to, I don't want, I don't want some of y'all who, who promise to be with me, man, with, when, when, the, when the stuff hit the fan, you know, I look around and you ain't there because I'm going to shoot you if you ain't. I say, man, I got out here because I thought y'all was with me. <laughs> don't take that serious, okay? I don't want nobody to get that out of it. I ain't going to shoot nobody. Unless I have to, that is. Yeah, buddy. Those who followed the brother abandoned him except two. And they were exiled under the order of Emperor Constantine. And as you saw, he died 11 years later. So, what was the outcome of the Nicene Council? A lie was put in place under a European pharaoh, a brother who was born a couple of centuries after the lie got put in place, rose up to speak the truth. And what did the powers that be do to the brother? Shut him down. Exiled him. And threatened him under the order of death to keep his mouth shut. All of the books that he wrote, all of the lectures that he had done, that's why I got my hard drive backed up many times over in many different places. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Okay? Gotta do it, man. Too much work went into all this research. You know, they, the order was to burn all of his literature. Burn it! Get rid of it! You know? So the outcome of the Council of Nicaea was the transformation of Serapis Christus, which means Christ the Savior. Y'all see it? Serapis, Soter, Christ the Savior became Jesus Christ by Edict of Emperor Constantine in 325 AD. <laughs> the Romanized fabricated figure known as Jesus Christ became a fictionalized Soter, Savior of the world. And just as I close now, and, and just as with Brother Arius, anyone, who does say? Anyone who tries to reveal the truth about the lie that Rome has perpetrated upon the world, especially Africans, they become the victims of severe anathematization. So, understand.
understand that, brothers and sisters. Officers understand that. Young people, young brother, like the question is, understand what lies ahead, man. African family, liberators, revolutionaries, understand what lies ahead. Walk together, children. Don't you ever get weary. Walk together, pray together, sing together, shout together. Don't ever get weary. Hold up your head. Because the ancestors, good God Almighty, got a great camp meeting going on. In the promised land. The ancestors are excited, Brady. Because we, their great, great, great grandchildren, are taking up the mantle of their life, their deeds, their legacy, their contribution, and saying, we're going to do like Brother Arius and cry out against this deception that keeps the minds of our people under arrest. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We sing in the song, they'll be coming from the north, south, east, and west. Good Lord have mercy to stand by our side. So don't be afraid. You know, I, there's a biblical story about a young man and his mentor going to war. And all the armies of the enemy were all around the hilltops and the mountains. And the young brother who didn't have much experience in spiritual warfare got scared and said to his teacher, We're going to die. We're going to die. We're going to die. And Elijah, in the text, who had much more experience in spiritual warfare, said, God help this young man. Open his eyes. And help him to understand that they that be with us are more than those who are against us. Brothers and sisters, ain't enough, ain't, ain't enough opposition out here to outnumber our ancestors. ancestors. That's why we say it every time we come together. All ancestors stand with us. Protect us and guide us and teach us. Protect us from the snare of our enemies. Rise up, O oh African ancestors, and let our enemies be scattered. Then we say, and give us the wisdom and the boldness to deal with our oppressors and those who would hinder the liberation and empowerment of our people. Rise up, O oh African ancestors, and live in us. Ooh, buddy. Ah, and if you do that, we will not fail to honor you. We will not fail to respect we will not fail to hear you and we will not sell out and betray you. Oh, shame. It is so.